Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in today's one I want to tell you a story about Intel's short-lived and controversial upgrade service. I've covered this in the past with a brief video in which we spoke about the Pentium G6951, a two-core CPU that had its hyper-threading and an extra megabyte of cache locked behind a $50 paywall. That's right, purchasing a scratch-off card from a local PC store, downloading the appropriate software and entering a unique code gave users access to these otherwise hidden processor features. Compatible motherboards also needed to feature a certain chipset and the change itself was tied to the board, not the CPU. The reason I'm revisiting this topic four years later is because I recently discovered that this program was extended to certain Sandy Bridge processors, and with some of Intel's Socket 1155 chips being among my favourites, I just had to talk about it. While the Clarkdale Pentium G6951 probably benefited from this upgrade service the most, the now rare i3-2102 is deserving of its own tail. The i3-2102 is a dual-core hyper-threaded processor that was launched in 2011 and on paper it's impossible to differentiate it from the i3-2100 that I'm sure we're all familiar with. Both share the same clock speed, cache, integrated graphics and iGPU clock, bus speed and TDP. The i3-2102 however had a hidden alter ego. Thanks to the same controversial and short-lived program that was discontinued not long after the release of this chip, the otherwise locked i3-2102 could have been turned into a 3.6GHz i3-2153 via the same aforementioned CPU upgrade service. Doing this would have made it the fastest core i3 in the entire Sandy Bridge lineup. In fact, it wasn't until 2014 and the release of the Haswell i3-4160 that any core i3 would reach these speeds again. While I personally wouldn't have paid for such a service, I'm sure there were a fair share of takers. Those with limited PC upgrade knowledge or owners of certain pre-built systems looking for a straightforward and otherwise unattainable performance boost may have been tempted. Frustratingly, I can't bring you performance comparisons between the standard and then the so-called unlocked i3 because the upgrade service is long gone, but we can sort of simulate the effects of this software-based enhancement using other CPUs from within the same lineup. Comparing the i3-2100 to another Sandy Bridge i3, the 2130 is a good place to start. The 2130 is clocked at a locked 3.4GHz, but the base clock can be slightly increased with certain boards. The limit is usually somewhere between 103 and 106MHz, maybe a little bit more if you get lucky. An increase to 105MHz, the limit I ran into, puts us at 3.56GHz, just below the 3.6 gigahertz speed of the unlocked i3-2102 or 2153. Programs like Cinebench will highlight the difference in clock speeds and I even saw a second or two shaved off my Premiere Pro render time though the two physical cores are the limitation. Back in 2011, a Core i5-2400 would have cost about $50 to $60 more than a second gen i3, so it would have made more sense to pay the extra for a better CPU instead of an increased clock speed, and I'm sure, or I hope, most people did. But considering the i3-2102 was found in certain pre-builds, those buying them may have appreciated the pay-to-upgrade service instead, as I'm sure it was pretty convenient for the inexperienced. Continuing on with our simulated tests, and I've created a few CPU-bound gaming scenarios by testing the i3 at 720p resolution in processor-intensive games. Despite the limitation lying primarily with the physical core count, the extra speed certainly counts for something. Fortnite was tested by trying to replicate the same actions both times around, but CSGO and GTA 5 were both tested with their respective benchmarking maps, the former of which is a user-created workshop map available on Steam. I just feel that actual gameplay is more interesting. But there we go. I just feel as though actual gameplay footage is more interesting. But there we go. Owners of certain computers back in 2011 could have paid $50 to get access to what would have been the fastest Core i3 available or just paid the equivalent and got an i5 instead. But honestly, I find the idea of this 
interesting nonetheless, as it would have certainly helped out some PC users who either couldn't upgrade or didn't have the confidence to do so. I hope you guys found this interesting too, whether or not you see this whole thing as a positive or negative um, service. That is of course entirely up to you though. Thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed this one leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.